Hello again, everybody. My name is Pixel Rain, or Rain for short. And today we're going to go over the myriad of changes that I've made to our Voxel system. But before we get into that, I'd like to talk a little bit about my plans with the series and what exactly I mean by the end in the video title here. This uh, series is pretty time consuming if I'm working on it consistently. And I've got a couple other things I would rather devote large amounts of time to. Um, I want to make a couple game demos and I've got some other stuff to work on. So my solution to that was to make this entire voxel system more modular. And in doing that, making it a more modularized system means I don't have to do large updates like this to bring out new features for you guys. I can do it within modules instead of, you know, everything is part of the framework, which is something I should have thought of when I started this series, I suppose, but we're here now. So in the thousands of lines of code changes I've made, that is the overarching goal was to do that. So these videos will still be coming out going forward, but they'll be module oriented um, they probably will not be long series. I'll still obviously be answering questions in my Discord about everything, working on requests for people, um, but there will definitely be some shifts in focus. For instance, I would like to actually work on streaming again. Um, as a few of you may have noticed, I do have a Twitch channel, and with streaming means I would like to also make videos from streaming to post on YouTube. So there might be some mixed content coming here in the near future where I've got programming tutorials and stuff still, but also an influx of gaming videos from my Twitch. Feel free to ignore those if you want, if they're not your cup of tea. The same thing will go for anyone who is here for the gaming videos. They don't have to watch the programming videos, obviously. So... That's kind of my plan for going forward. Videos for modules and system updates. Possibly going to release this as a cheap package on the store. I'm not doing anything with the GitHub repo. That'll still be open. The tutorials will still be up. But, you know, for some people who just want a quick one-time support or just don't feel like watching hours and hours of tutorials, there will be a package. And, you know... I think between the Discord and everything else, it'll be a nice little community for anyone who's looking to work with a very weird voxel system. So, to get into some of the changes that have been made, you'll notice that A, I've been sitting on this modules game object in the inspector over here. So we can start with taking a look at these. Go ahead and pop open this one, it's a pretty simple one. So this is a spawn module, or that's what I called it. It's just a neat little example. And all it does is when on generation is complete, it just writes a little debug. And this would be where you would handle spawning a player, for instance. And now this was the scope of what I was planning for these modules originally when I started doing these yesterday, ironically. But then I was like, you know what? No, I can make an on before meshing pass that runs after the density generation is done but before we contour everything. And in that, we can handle converting our seed blocks and putting the rocks and trees and bushes that are used in our infinite terrain system. I can do that in this module instead of having it hard-coded into our chunk. Wild. Obviously, there is still a hook in our chunk for it. Um, I will probably come up with a solution outside of it, but right now it's something like... If that module exists, then we want to go ahead and update the module for it. That doesn't actually apply to the structures. Um, the structures are called separately because they modify the modified voxels for a chunk. Yeah, that's called right here. And then our water, our active voxel module, is still called within the chunk, but it's a lot less intensive and inclusive than it was before in my opinion so it's always what we're looking for so that's you know kind of what i wanted for these modules um, you can see the different stages here we have on before generation which runs before the actual world generation starts on before meshing which runs between our density and our contouring stages 
on generation complete, which is called when our initial pass of generation is done in the case of the infinite terrain, or when your entire generation is done if you're just doing a level oriented build. Then there's an on tick function, and this is run on a background thread within the world. You can actually control the tick through world settings. Let me show that real quick. So that's a 300 millisecond tick time, and that's actually what is controlling our water speed. So in theory, if we were to change this to 800, and then drop the water, it'll run at a much, much slower rate versus if it's at 200. So that's, that's what that does. And you can see it's actually a pretty simple script. Uh, register gets called on any modules that are active in your scene at startup. And then on shutdown, it unsubscribes itself. So pretty simple little scripts, but the amount you can get done in one of these scripts is pretty ridiculous. Obviously, you'll still need to work on the density side of things and so on and so forth, but it feels a lot easier than what it was before. Speaking of, we can actually take a look at our world now, which is an abstract class. And within this class, we handle the actual processing, the lower level of processing and the pooling for mesh data and so on and so forth. Um, so a lot of those functions that would not change between worlds are still in here. And we can actually take a quick look at one of our worlds here. This is a world example, and I can show you what that looks like real quick. And this is a world example. It's just a simple little chunk of terrain that generates, probably the easiest setup you can have but I've got our active voxel module added in so we can have water flowing. Obviously you can still manipulate the terrain and that's, that's it. That's the simple example of a world and you can see this is all the code it takes to actually execute that. So these are all the functions here have to be implemented but they don't have to do anything like in the case of initialized density shader this would be used for non-changing density shader variables. Like if you have a biome configuration like there is in infinite terrain or seeds or anything that doesn't change in between passes of your density shader would be assigned here. And then you can see kind of how that's done right here with our execute density stage. And this would be changing values generally buffers or positions between executions of that density shader. The do update function is called from update within our world class. Uh, right now this is generally going to be used for checking if our generation is actually completed. We could hook this into a delegate and do it that way with a module. That would be kind of neat. But for right now, I've just hooked it into the do update functions on these example worlds. Then we have a start override function, which I don't know why it's down there. That doesn't really make any sense. Just move that up there. So this function just calls generate level. That's called from world during the startup sect and you're going to use a function like that if you're doing a level oriented or even for an infinite terrain just to start your generation passes then after that you can handle it however you want so you can see the generate level function here just renders or just queues up a chunk set from render distance times render distance plus one to give us a nice square based on our world settings render distance and this just enqueues it to our world or our generation manager, which we can actually go take a look at now that the worlds have been kind of explained. 
this is going to be the new evolution of our compute manager. Um, we are down to one type of buffer, which is a generation buffer. We no longer have two, which helps things feel a little cleaner. Most of the functionality in here is going to be the same as compute manager, except it's a static class and you really aren't going to have to come in here for anything except maybe to verify what's being set on a compute shader. The contouring section is pretty much black boxed. You shouldn't have any reason to come in here. Most of your changes are going to be on the density side or within your world itself or within one of those modules. So that's, you can always come take a look and see what I did, but I don't, you won't have to come in here very often anymore. And then some other small changes. Um, if you're downloading the source, I'm including uh, Jimmy Kushni's Noisy Nodes HLSL library, which includes other people's HLSL libraries, but it's a nice collection of noise. Um, and they're all under a nice open license, so I can include that in here and make it easier for when you're working on your density templates or your density shaders. Um, and I have an example of the a pretty bare bones density shader included called density template this you're going to use at least two kernels pretty much regardless and all the default variables are going to be stored within shared variables which of course i can't open that cleanly so our chunk size position our noise array our count buffers that'll all be in that shared variables file and that's all default stuff so you won't really have to go through and mess with that if you don't want to we've got the basic functionality in here it's just a clear array function and then our actual density grabbing function that maps it to our special voxel density so pretty simple overall i think obviously we still have our infinite terrain which is under height map density and this is definitely the most complex example in here <laughs> I also started working on biomes for this so you can definitely play with that a little bit foliage I believe foliage and structures are not quite implemented yet but the basics of biomes are so that'll be also included in here and I think that's about it Obviously, I did go find some different textures, which look a little bit better, but they're nice example textures. Those are from Drummy Fish. Um, so thanks to him or them for it. And same with Jimmy Kushni and all those authors of those HLSL noise libraries. It makes putting something like this together a lot easier. And then included in the current revision, you've also got, I've got everything separated into some nice prefabs for you to mess with. And the modules and worlds are up here in the examples folder. So feel free to come take a look through all this stuff. So things I might make going forward with this would be new modules. We might work on new world types. So potentially a planetoid would be something that we could work on that would be within a world itself and it would make a much more contained series as opposed to this huge overarching just voxel project which is just a huge topic as you guys have seen so far um, obviously I will continue working on the infinite terrain in my spare time but again the overall goal of this move and everything is just so I can start working on other projects and not feel so bogged down with this while still making content you guys want to see regarding voxels because obviously that's why you're here but I don't want to have another channel and all that stuff and it just gets too messy How... oh I've saved code got it <laughs> I don't even know how my own code works like that's god what kind of developer am I so that's pretty much what I've got for you guys. Um, that is kind of what it is. Obviously, you guys can join the Discord. You can ask me to work on specific things. I will get around to it when I have the time. I still 
very much enjoy working on procedural generation. So that's not going to go away anytime soon. If you guys have questions for me, if you want to see something specific done with procedural generation, you can always join my Discord, chat with me there. If you like the content I'm making, I do have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description as well. And hopefully you guys stick around for more videos in the future. But if not, thank you for joining me on the ride to get where we are with this Voxel series. And I will see you guys in the next video.